All right, here's a short video for Riverside 3.6, day one, number seven. I got a few questions on this, so I'm gonna just do a short video to clarify for you guys. So first of all, here's the original function. I've gotten to my calculator as the factored version of it. So I took two out of the numerator, factored the denominator, and we'll run through this list. And my questions that I've been getting have been more about the range, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, as far as this stuff goes, x-intercept, if I just set my numerator equal to zero, I can just solve that actually. So I got x-intercept at two. Uh, y-intercept would be, you know, for my original function, negative 4 over negative 2, so y-intercept at 2, so 2, 0, and 0, 2. Vertical asymptote from the factored version, vertical asymptotes, there's two of them, negative 2 and 1. Remember, that's what's the numbers that cause you to get a division by 0, a domain issue. And then EBA would be 2, and again, sorry, EBA would be y equals 0, because the degree in the top is smaller than the degree in the bottom, so y equals 0. So generate your list. I don't think that's really not too big a deal. I'm going to go ahead and sketch the graph here. The reason I'm using the calculator is for the domain and range. I didn't need the calculator to do any of this stuff. Um, and also, really, you guys should probably be able to do kind of a rough sketch without the calculator. But the calculator is to talk about range with you guys. So if I'm going to the correct graph, let's just check my options here. It is. It looks like it's this one in the lower corner here. So this one being the correct graph. Now, domain... Um, you know, break is broken up by the asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes. So you're going to go negative infinity. Let's do it over here. Negative infinity to negative 2. Negative 2 to 1. And then 1 to infinity, domain. Range, um, what happened to some people is they actually did like negative infinity to infinity, but there's an empty space in here. There's no graph sitting in this space right in here. So what I need to do actually is do a max and min because I want to know what is this. It looks like it's at the y-intercept, but you've got to double check that because that may not be the case. So what is this? And then also, um, this looks like to me, and I'll kind of zoom in on it a little, in a little bit here, because I see how it goes up, then it sort of flattens, it gets darker, then it sort of gets lighter. That means to me it looks like there might be a little bit of a bump in here. That's kind of unusual for, um, in other words, like it, it runs up above the, Horizontal asymptote a little bit, rides above it for a little bit, and then it starts to approach it again and come back down. Um, so rational functions do have some set types and, and ways they behave, but they also have some quirks like all graphs do, actually. Um, especially when you talk about polynomial or rational. So we're going to have to figure out what's going on here, too. We need to know what this number is and probably something around here what this number is. So when we do the range, we can have an interval that leaves that stuff out. So I'm going to first of all change things a little bit. I'm going to do a feature I've never shown you guys, but I'll just do it here, which is a zoom box. And when you do a zoom box, what you're doing there is you're drawing a box around the areas that you want to specifically look at. So I actually move my cursor to the starting point of drawing the box. I hit enter, the cursor goes solid, and then I actually can draw my box with my directional arrows. And what I'm going to enclose is the places where I have these things that I want to look at, which is basically there. So now when I zoom box it, I'm going to get just this piece of the graph. Instead of like a zoom in or a zoom out where you're zooming the entire graph around a spot, here I'm actually boxing in exactly what I want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I hit enter the, for the, so it was um, move my cursor where I want to start to draw, draw the box, then enter will actually go in on that. So now I'm going to see that. So that still looks like it's probably at two, but here's what I was going to show you guys. So you can see how right there rides up a little bit above the asymptote. That's a max. And then starts to come back down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my calc features here. And we're going to do some max and min. So let's start out with a min. We'll do number three. And here, um, that should actually be up there. i got to jump to it. Okay, so what's going to, what should happen here is if I go with my cursor far enough. Let's see what happens. There we go. It jump graphs. Um, so because I was stuck over here, it's like, how do I get over there, right? So what I did is I just kept arrowing over. Eventually, it jumped over the asymptote and jumped to the other part of the graph. Um, so, doing a little bit of a min here. So, I'm going to mark. I'm pretty sure it's at two, but you know, you, um, mins are not always, and maxes just because they sort of look like they hit a wire step. That's definitely not always the case. So, I want to be sure about that. And so, yeah, it looks like it's two. So, fine. So, then I'm going to need to know what this number is. So, I'm going to go do that next. So, we'll go calc, and then we'll do a max. Again, my cursor is sitting here. I'm going to have to jump graph. So what I'm going to do is just go until I can't see it anymore, and eventually it'll pop up on the other one, and there it is. So I can see that little bit of a rise right there. So what I'm going to do is get on this, each side of the flat spot. Again, kind of an unusual thing for a um, rational function to do, but they do some weird things sometimes. 
Remember that EBEs or horizontal asymptotes are caused by what the fraction is doing, not by a domain restriction. So they can kind of do whatever the numbers let them do, essentially. Um, so 0 0.2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, whatever, so like 0 0.2. Okay, so now when I go to do my range, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my standard window. So I just keep that 0 0.2 number in mind. So what I'm going to do is a range. I'm going to start down here at negative infinity. I'm going to go negative infinity to 0 0.2 bracket because that's part of the graph. 0 0.2 to 2 brackets on both of those because those numbers are part of the graph. And then 2 to infinity and a bracket on that too. So brackets on all the non-infinity numbers. And again, I had to know what this spot was and what this spot was so I could figure out um, what to do with my intervals because in this empty space, there is no graph. Okay. So that's just a heads up on how that range is working. Um, again, a little bit of a twist there in the problem.